Frog Princess. I'm sure you've heard about yeah. that. So that's where they're making that. Um, what else? They um, Pixar makes a lot of animation feature films. They do not make it actually at the feature animation building, although they might do some of like the uh, um, like conceptual design stuff, you know, like uh, some of the background stuff, and kind of getting the look of that. But a lot of that goes to Pixar, where they actually do the CG animation and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I work in Disney TV animation, so I, a lot of all the stuff that I work on is. Uh, animated stuff that's going to go directly to TV. The, the show that I'm currently work on, working on is called Kick Patowski. Um, it's not out yet, and it'll actually air, I think, in December or January. That show, in particular, is going to go on to Disney XD, uh, which is a channel, one of the Disney channels that's on your cable network. Um, what else? Um, pop stuff here. You need to kill the lights right yet. Oh, okay, cool. Is that good? Yeah, yeah that's better. Um, I'm kind of a goofball. Um, and um, just wanted to give you guys some basic examples of, I popped up my Facebook just because I have a lot of my art on there. Um, and so, um, a lot of these that I'm showing you are going to be in grayscale because I am a background designer. These element, these pieces go to a colorist who actually go in and they color the backgrounds. The show that I am currently working on, about 70% of the time this is what the colorists get, but there's about 30% of the time where they actually actually, actually ask, ask me to color the backgrounds. Um, let's see. Um, here. A lot of the first part of this class is just going to be like more like what I do, how you can get into the industry kind of stuff, and like the other two thirds of the class is going to be actually going over illustrator. Is that cool with you guys? Sure. Yep. All right, cool. Is that cool, Santosh? Yep. Awesome. I would say that's the way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> this is all my music, too. Um, so I don't have alt on here, so what is alt on here? All right. This is me and my wife. We used to teach and compete in swing dancing. Nice. And that's how I met her. She's wonderful. This is another picture of us dancing at a club with my shirt that says Jean. My little gas station shirt. And we got married. She's beautiful. She's awesome. And then we had our first daughter, Cambria. Cambria Reese. And then... We had our second daughter, Skylar Ray. That's another one of her. Cammy is now, we call her Cammy. She's five and a half. Um, Skylar, she is, uh, she just turned three in July. That's her smiling. This is her pissed <laughs> off. We had a little tragedy in our family. This is our son, and he lived for four days. He died. Um, it was a the year anniversary was in June, this last June. And we literally held him in our in our arms as his heart stopped right there. Not to put a damper on the class, but uh, very moving experience. And there's another picture of my wife and daughter. So that's just a little bit about me. We live in Chino Hills. I have about a 40 mile drive to work. Um, so let's get back to this. Um, okay. 
So this is an illustrator background that I did for uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. These are kind of, these are JPEG files, so they're a little bit blurry. Um, there's another one I did for Foster's. It's kind of a fortress there. Have any of you ever seen Foster's? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, just another one. There's kind of an upshot in an arcade. You can see the arcade game up here. Um, just a bunch of junk. That's kind of a fun background to do. This is an upshot in a well. Just some of the different lighting effects that you can accomplish in Illustrator. Um, actually, let me go back. Um, you can look on the wall of this. You can see some texture on there, and I'm going to show you guys how you can achieve that. That's um, in Illustrator. There's a brushes palette, and you can create different brushes, uh, some dry brushes, um, uh, to get that kind of a feel of a little bit more texture in there. So it's just not like a smooth. It, those of you that have used Illustrator, it is an object-oriented program, so it's things are going to appear very smooth and crisp and clean lines and so with using brushes, you can uh, definitely, it's just a little snow. Some of these brushes down here that I use to create some highlights on the ice. This is Jackie Cohn's room from Foster's. It's kind of like a love room. Um, kind of a cool shot. Uh, inside, this is inside a refrigerator, like if you're looking through like a hole at the back of the fridge and looking, and this is like the opening. Um, there's a cool little illustrator piece. Um, this is kind of a storybook sequence that we did in Foster's. And one of my favorite artists is uh, Ivan Earl that did Sleeping Beauty. And so I kind of went off some of his style to create the background. Here's another one within that sequence from Foster's. I have a question. Yeah. How do you, uh, well, I guess not how, but I think it's cool how you can make it stylized and still be in perspective. Perspective, but it's very stylized. Yeah. So. Actually, Foster's is a very interesting style where um, it's almost like the style was there were it was tangents. That's it. And you like the perspectives on like like a table. Like the floor would be a flat. Like you know, it wouldn't be in perspective. It would like the elements would all be the same. Same size, flat, like the table would be down like this when it actually should be up more like this. But that was just kind of the style of the show. Um, that was one of the episodes of Kyle Carb. We super tuned in the Magic Potato Power. Uh, we did a uh, 10 year anniversary. I don't know, if, I never actually saw the episode, but we did a 10 year anniversary for Powerpuff Girls. Um, these are just some of the. Um, uh, models that I cleaned up in Illustrator. Um, you can see these different, these are different strokes that I would use. So you can actually go in and like create the shape, like the, use on a, a, the uh, elliptical tool, create the shape of her head, and then you can just click on one of these strokes and it would, you know, go into that stroke on there. Um, and a lot of the shows now in, in animation, in more particular TV animation, they're actually, I would say 95% of the shows actually do their character cleanup in Illustrator. Um, so if you're looking to get into that industry and you're into characters, um, that might be something that you get to focus on because there's a big need for people that know Illustrator and that can basically take the character designer's drawing and clean it up in Illustrator. They take those uh, those key poses, they send them overseas where it's animated. I don't know what they do it with it after that. As far I don't know if they use Illustrator over there. There's just some 
some more scenes from that uh, 10 year anniversary of Power of Girls episode. This is that one background, but in color. Kind of moves in Townsville Hall. Um, back in here, you can see there's some stro stroke that I use for the clouds. This is a, a dry brush. Um, in these trees, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but like in these trees in here, some more dry brush should give it some texture. And that's still in Illustrator? This is all in Illustrator, all of it. Okay. Um, this is not Illustrator, this is Flapjack. I worked on Flapjack for about a year as a background designer. So these are just some of the drawings I did for those shows. Okay. Um, I have my little cheat sheet here. What was I supposed to do next? Um, in, uh, at Disney, um, or in this industry, I'm sure you guys might have some questions about what, um, like how do you get into this industry? Like what are you supposed to do? Um, my first job was at Cartoon Network on Foster. That was my first. Before that, I was a um, children's book illustrator. And for the, I did that for about eight or 10 years. For the about first five years, I did everything traditional. Uh, so all by hand, no computers, nothing. The, the second five years, I did almost everything in the computer. Uh, from there, I went to Cartoon Network. My friend got me a job there. And uh, Every show that I have been on in this industry, I have never once shown my portfolio. Wow. <laughs> yes. And I knew that was going to be a shock. Um, if you want to get into this industry, and probably any industry, I don't know about for Santosh and the industry that he was working in in video games, but for this industry, um, my friend had a job at Cartoon Network. He told the art director about me. He said, he's just as good as I am. I did some freelance work. I turned in my freelance work. The art director didn't even look at my freelance work. He said, do you want a job here? I said, don't you want to look at my work? <laughs> so he like quickly opened up and was looking at it. And he's also, do you want a job here? And I was like, um, OK, sounds cool. So that's how I got into the industry. It was just like that. Um, your reputation. Your work that you do is almost better than your portfolio. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, there are very few people in my industry that have gotten a job from showing their portfolio. Mm -hmm. My recommendation to you is that if you're going to go into Disney or Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon or Class Chupa or whatever, any of these, in, in, any of these studios, um, I would get an internship. There. Uh, develop a good reputation with the people that on the show that you're working with. Show your work to people. Go around to their office. Here, here's my work. Look what I can do. Do a good job. Get a good reputation, and that will later on down the line, when somebody's thinking about, oh yeah, I know somebody that can do this kind of work, and they do a really good job, and they're going to remember you. Make cards. Make little, you know, just make little cards that have your information on it, pass it on to people on your show. They'll, they will remember you if they like you. That's what it's all about. If they like you, so that's, that is that. That is how you get into the industry. Um, what else? Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of the process of how a show works. Is that, is that cool? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, the first thing we go over is um, a, an outline is written for a script. Once that script is written, that script goes uh, for approval, it gets approved. Then that script goes to the voice actors. The voice actors go into the studio, they do voiceover recording. Um, after, after that, it goes to, um, to the board artists. The board artists take those scripts. And every studio is different. Some storyboard artists will actually do the script and board at the same time. But for the most part, the script is written by a writer, and it goes to a storyboard artist. 
once the storyboard is done and approved, that storyboard goes out to the designers, which are the background designers, the character designers, and the props and effect designers. Um, do, do you guys know all what those are? The character designers, obviously character backgrounds, obviously backgrounds. Um, the props and effects are splashing water, uh, a character throwing mud, um, a prop would be an opening and closing a door, um, a character picking up a bucket, those are all the props. Okay. After those are designed, it goes to, depending on the show, we'll go to cleanup, Both the characters, props and effects, and backgrounds will be cleaned up, depending on how they're doing the backgrounds on the show. Um, that design will go directly to a painter. If they're doing a traditional, they'll just use that drawing as a template to paint that background, whether it's traditional or on Photoshop. In my case, um, I work in Illustrator. I do know Photoshop equally as well. Um, so a lot of the shows are more than likely going to be using Illustrator and Photoshop to do their backgrounds now because it's much more forgivable. Um, and uh, so that is the basic process. That goes over, overseas to whoever's animating it. They do all the key backgrounds, or we do the key backgrounds, they do all the extra backgrounds. So whatever, so we do one scene that will encompass every other scene. So um, we'll do a wide shot of uh, a park. And if there's other scenes that kind of close within that park, then they need to create those backgrounds. Same with the characters we send over the character designs. Um, they do all the animation. Um, comes back to the studio for editing and compositing. Um, they use After Effects for that. Most shows do. That's another good program to learn. If you guys want to learn to do some compositing, uh, putting a show together at the final stage. Um, and that's the basic process. And then it goes to the TV. Um, so, um, let's see, um, I did bring a storyboard, I'll let you guys pass it around. We now get them digitally, but we were getting them like this, a uh, hard copy. Um, this is from The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, so I'll pass it around, you guys can just kind of look through a little bit. Um, is there anybody in here interested in storyboarding? Awesome. I am not a storyboarder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, what time were we going to take a break? Like 2.15 or something like that? Yeah, I mean, we can do a little bit later since we started late. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, um, Illustrator, um, it sounds like a lot of you guys work in Photoshop. Um, Photoshop is a bitmap pixel based program. In that program you're going to be able to get a lot of soft edges. Um, you're going to be able to blend things really well. Um, you're going to get more of a painterly look to it. Um, Illustrator is a object-oriented program. And what I mean by that is everything is works in objects.
Um, there is a background. Is there any way to widen this, or is that so it works for this? I think I think so. Perspective of this first. Okay. Um, so. Um, This program, what I mean by an, it's an object-oriented program, um, and I've never worked in CS4, so it's a little, a little unfamiliar to me, sorry about that. Everything is object. This right here is an object. See that? <coughs> going to be a solid fill. These are your fills over here. This is your stroke. Um, um, these are all just strokes. These are textured brush strokes that are, that are over here. Um, so in, like in Photoshop, you'd be able to go and let's say you wanted to put a shadow on this. Uh, uh, how do you turn off these smart guide things? I don't know. You don't know? Oh, they're annoying. Do you? Uh, go to objects. And then, uh, or maybe view or windows. It's at like the bottom, there's a smart guide thing. I'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, go to view and then smart guides. And then view. Oh, there it is. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> okay, so like in Photoshop, see this pipe that I have here? Like if you wanted to go in and add a shadow in here, like make it look a little bit darker, you just take the paintbrush and go in, and you know, and you make it easy, like a shadow. But in this case, in this program, if you want to create a shadow on this, you need, it's, it's still going to be an object, you need to, you have to mess around with the gradients. I know this, for a lot of you that don't know Illustrator, this is going to sound kind of uh, oh, there we go. Cool. Um, but you'd have to go in and then you know create this little shape in here. down the opacity, so it's more like, a, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. <coughs> Drop down the opacity, so it looks more like a shadow. So if you want to do stuff like that, that's going to have, how you're going to have to do it, is go in there and there, so everything is an object, so I can move that object out. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Um, So I have a handout for you guys. Do you want to pass those out? Yeah. I think it's there. Yeah, there's <coughs> five there's five pages. <coughs> this is just gonna be something you can take home, but we're actually gonna work go through these right now. Um, so I have the very first five pages of that. Do you wanna put the color ones on on your desk thing? We can put them on the, the server. Um, like or? Yeah, we can do that. I'm just trying to figure out how I, I, why I can't grab this, the top part of this piece, this file. 
You know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm, I'm not an illustrator guy, so I don't really know. It's the first time I worked illustrator. You have to get a graphic designer in here. Yeah. You know how to do it. You know, graphic designer. You know how to grab the top portion of the... I've, I've never worked in CS4, so just I don't know why it's... Graphic. Center click, and all your windows should just still be uh, able to be seen. What do you mean center click? Like the little oh, mouse ball. Oh. Oh, God, no, I won't do that. <laughs> Sometimes it breaks the yeah, yeah. He wants to grab the button. That's what I've been doing right now. Oh, because it's... Yeah, see, that's the thing with CS4. Tabs? Uh, try clicking out on the background so that it opens up. And Here, I'm just going to hit W, time. so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, yeah, let me open up. So, it's, everybody has the Illustrator open, right? Right. Okay. Um, some different windows I want to have you guys open up. If you go up to... Um, um, First page is. Let me know when everybody has the handout. This should be the first page on the handout. Does everybody have a hand up? No. Not yet? Okay. Well, while everybody's doing that, just for those of you that don't really know Illustrator that well, I'm just going to go over some of these basic tools. This is your tool palette. You see this? Um, these two arrows that are at the top, the black one is your direct I'm sorry, it's your selection tool. So you're going to be able to go in and see this square right here? You're going to be able to go in you can select that. If you just wave over it, you'll be able to select it. And you can move it around by clicking on the edge of it, wherever you want. If you mess up, just hit Command-Z or Apple-Z. Uh, this white arrow is your direct selection tool. This tool, you'll be able to actually go into this square and select an actual anchor. See how there's these little white anchors at each corner of this square? You can go in and you can move that in any way. That's what the white arrow is for. You can, select, you can move it with... Uh, you have to go in, you have to select each point so that they're no longer white, then you can actually move that around. Um, I'm just basically, I'm going to be going over some of the tools that I use, uh, and you'll find out the more and more you use Illustrator and even Photoshop, that there's several different ways to accomplish the same thing. Um, it's the same thing in Illustrator. Um, like you can make a line with this pen tool, a straight line, or you can use this. Make a straight line. There's just multiple different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you the way I do it. Uh, this is the pen tool. With this pen tool, you can go in and actually do you know, create in your own little line shape. So you got that. Um, 
And if you want to man manipulate that line, you use the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool, like you didn't like the way, the way this was looking. So you can go in and manipulate this corner to make it look more round or whatever. Uh, so that is the pen tool right here. Um, this is the brush tool. You can go in and you make... This is why I like to use the Wicom tablet. It's really hard to do this with the mouse. Um, so you can go in and create some different organic looking shapes. You can join it by using the pen tool. Um, so that is the brush tool. Am I moving too fast for any of you? Or? And you guys can follow along with me while you're doing this. Just um, I love to use this tool, and we'll get to that in a second. This is the knife tool. Um, huh? It's very aggressive. Let's see. This tool right here is the rectangle tool. So you can make different rectangles. If you hold the shift key while doing it, it will make a exact symmetrical square. If you hold down on that click and hold, it will pop up this submenu on there. You'll see some different shapes in there. Um, you got this rectangle tool that will give you rounded edges. Lips tool, you can get some ovals. Um, again, if you hold down the shift key, you'll get a perfectly symmetrical circle. If you hold down the shift key and option key, it'll give you a circle from, it'll expand that circle from the center. If you just hold down the shift key, it will still give you a symmetrical circle, but it's not going to pull it from the center. Does that make sense? Everything? When you move to the um, anchor point, say you have a box and you want it to be, uh, you know, come out like this, can you move those two uniformly so that you don't have to... Uh, so you want to, like, let's say create, like, a perspective? Yeah. Like your perspective? Well, I'm actually going to go over that. Yeah, a little bit later on one of these handouts. But that's a great question. Uh, But the tools that I use the most are this pen tool, the black and white arrow, the brush tool right here, and then there's different things that I use that are on some of these tool palettes that you can pop up. Um, so that first little handout thing that I gave you, the first page, everybody has their handout now? Okay, cool. Um, uh, just some really good exercises that um, can really help you achieve um, some different uh, things are the divide tool. This is the divide tool is this tool right here. It's on it's on the Pathfinder palette, which is right here. Um, this is the divide tool. What you can do with that tool is you have, you need to create two intersecting shapes. So you have this square here and then this rectangle here. Um, let's say you're creating a down shot of a wraparound desk. Okay? This is a down shot. So you're looking from the scene and look it down. This is the top of the desk right here. So. But this is where, like, the chair, the guy sitting down is going to be. Does that make sense? Okay. So you need to cut out this piece, this shape out of this square. So you can take this square, or this rectangle, I'm sorry. And you guys can try this, actually, on your computer. Um, it's 
So the way you do this is go over to this um, rectangle tool, hold down the shift key, make a square. Go over to the black arrow, click the screen so that it's, that shape is deselected. Okay. Go back over to this rectangle tool. And you can make a rectangle shape over that square. Does that make sense? I hope so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now to cut out your this rectangle shape right here that I have over this shape, its whole purpose is to cut out of this rectangle. And you're going to be able to do that by using the divide tool. Once you have those two shapes, take your black arrow you and go over to the tool palette if you need to. Or if you want to, I am very command key heavy, so I use lots of command keys. There's a command key to actually get to that. So if, let's say you have this rectangle tool uh, active, push the V, just the letter V, it'll pop up the black arrow. So now they have the black arrow. We we'll just marquee over both of those shapes, it'll select both of them. And then, does, does everybody have their Pathfinder palette open? No. If you don't, you can go up to your window, scroll down through window, and there's, it'll say Pathfinder. Just click on that. This window should pop up. <coughs> Yours is red and mine is blue. Does that make a difference? What, the outline? Yeah. My case is red, hers is blue, mine is blue, hers is red. I don't think it really matters. I work in CS3. I have CS at home. Yeah. Um, you know, even the Disney Studio doesn't even have CS4 yet. So I, I, I don't. I, I'm kind of like whenever I start on a, a new version, there's things I don't like. Already, I'm looking at this now. There's things I don't like about this. Um, so. Um, so now that you, does everybody have their two selections, or two objects selected? Okay, now go over to this Pathfinder palette, and go over to the Divide tool. See how it says Divide? Just click on that. Once you use one of these uh, tools in the Pathfinder palette, it is going to group those elements. So if I use my black arrow tool right here, uh, and select this, it's going to select everything. That means all those elements are now grouped. In order to ungroup it, there's two ways to do it. You can go over to Object, Ungroup. The other way to do it is to go Apple Shift G. So it has to be selected. You go Apple Shift G, that'll ungroup it. Now you can go in and take out all these elements. Does that make sense? Everybody got that? Yeah. Awesome. So now you have your downshot wraparound desk. That is the first element in the Pathfinder tool. Palette. Did anybody not get that? It's community. Okay. I think that is good. Uh, okay, the next thing on that sheet is the add to shape area tool. This is just basically, if you take these two same shapes, this square and this rectangle, currently they are two separate shapes. Put them together. You want to make them one shape. You take these two two objects, select both of them with the black arrow tool. You go up onto your Pathfinder tool palette. That right there is your add to shape tool. So you click on that. It'll make it into one shape. 
these are different things that I use a lot. And the way I use them is um, say I have a tree trunk, okay, and I want to create an element over here that has. Because when you're creating backgrounds, you need to think about light and shadow. Where's your light source coming from? So in this case, we'll say that this tree, uh, the sun is over here. So this side's going to be lit. Um, I haven't gone over this tool yet, but I'm going to use it anyways. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Um, you can create another shape that goes over top of this object for the shadow. This area right here, I'm trying to make it into a shadow area. I'm going to use the divide tool in order to accomplish that. Go in, I'll divide it, ungroup it. I'm going to get rid of that excess, and this trim out here on the outside is not part of the tree, so I'm going to get rid of it. Now that's your shadow area. Now I can go in, and add a shadow. black line is around this? Oh, that's the fill. The black fill, yeah. Oh, it's got a stroke around it, sorry. Thank you. So now you have a shadow effect. So that's one of the ways you can use these pathfinder tools. I use this probably every five minutes. Um, let's see. I like to use this knife tool. Obviously I made a mistake. This is the eraser tool. <coughs> this should have been over here. Um, what you can do with the knife tool is you have an object and you want to cut it in half, let's say. So you can go over to your tool palette. Here's your knife tool. If on your computer it has the eraser, in order to get to that knife tool, you have to click and hold on that, it'll pop up that submenu, keep holding, and then you can come over to the knife tool, select the knife tool. That way now you can go in and you can cut this. Um, so you can have all these different shapes. I use this a lot for everything. Um, <laughs> again, you have a tree trunk. Let's say here's your tree trunk. Um, and instead of using that divide tool to create the shadow, area. Um, what did I just do? Change the background. Are you using the 
using the crop tool. Thank you. Um, I can go in and cut out this shape. is how to use the knife tool. Um, if you are using the knife tool and you just want to make a straight line, you just hold down the shift key. Oops. Wait, not shift key. I'm sorry, option key. Um, it'll make a straight line cut in any perspective direction you want to go. Or if you just want to make a straight across, you can hold down an option to shift and it will constrain it to just uh, straight across or up and down if you try and do it at an angle of that. So that is the knife tool. Um, the next page on the handout. Um, this is a pretty easy one. It's the uh, um, swatches. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay. You guys have any questions? Okay. Um, swatches are, uh, if you go up here to uh, window, Scroll down to the bottom of your window, there should be a thing that says swatches. at your swatches palette. There's some different swatches that I put into this uh, back to this file. Um, what I use swatches for is like, let's say I'm creating a couch um, that's in a house, and I want that couch to have a fabric texture to it. I can use a bitmap texture. Um, from a couch, from like an actual whatever piece of fabric or whatever, and um, I can apply that to that to that couch to make it look like that couch actually has like a fabric texture to it. Um, or you can go in and add a swatch. Um, just to go over this exercise with you guys. Um, Again, go over to your, well, just, we're just going to deal with squares and circles and stuff like that, just to make it simple. Come over here to your tool palette. Again, just make sure you have your rectangular marquee selected. You can make a square or a rectangle, whatever you want. Um, I didn't really go over this, but I'm, most of you do know this, that know Illustrator, but down here on your tool palette is, this is your fill, and this is your stroke. So right now we have, this is your stroke that's going around the outside of this object. The inside is going to be filled with white. If you don't want anything filled in there, you can go down to this red like Ghostbusters X out. And it, right now, and then now it won't have any, it'll just have an outline. If you just want it to be a fill, it's just a fill. Um, 
So in this exercise, we'll just do it uh, as an outline. So the fill can just have nothing through it. So make sure you have a black outline. Everybody got that? No? Yes? yes. OK, cool. Um, so to apply a swatch to this, you can go up to your swatch palette. Um, and just click on whatever swatch you want and you'll, it'll just fill it with this swatch. Um, I'll use like this for different textures like on, on the ground or um, like I'll put this on a cushion. Um, I can go in to that couch cushion that has the swatch now. Let's say I didn't want <coughs> that pattern to be big. I wanted it to actually be a little bit smaller. Not the cushion itself, but the actual, just the pattern. I want the, the pattern to be smaller. Um, to do that, you would go into Object, Transform, um, Scale. Down here on this submenu, you don't want to you don't want to scale the object. You just want to scale the pattern, and you can adjust the the percentage. So let's say I want it to be 50% of what it is now. So I just type in 50. Now it's going to be smaller. Um, I can go in and add a shadow on this cushion by using the knife tool I can just cut out just a simple little edge around this. Here that I haven't really gone over. But I can create it in a shadow on this texture. Does that make sense? So I have this couch cushion with this swatch texture, and I put a shadow around it. So that is swatches. And that's how I use swatches in my industry. If I'm doing a couch, I can throw that cool, like, um, plaid texture on the couch. I mean, I don't know anybody who would want to have a plaid couch, but... This is the next little exercise. This is a, the clipping mask. It's kind of cool because you can uh, take these, some of these dry brushes right here. Um, let me get you guys actually this file so you can have these dry brushes. Okay. Um, is there a way that I can get them these files? Yeah, just drop it on the desktop. I'll create a directory in the contract. Okay. Let's go over this really quick and then um, when we come back we're going to 
you guys are going to be, I'm going to walk around and help you guys do a lot of this stuff. Um, and I'll get you some of these files that have like the dry, cool dry brushes and stuff. Um, brushes are everything. I use brushes. It takes a flat piece of work and it makes it into something that has a lot of cool texture. And, um, so if you go up to window, if you don't have it open already, and go on brushes, this is your brush palette. If it comes up to where it says swatches, brushes, symbols, you can just drag that, brush, click on that word brush, hold it and drag it down and you'll have your own, make it its own, you close this other thing so you don't have too many things going on. Or you can just keep it open like that, whatever you want to do. Um, these are some different brushes that I like to use. Um, if you want to create a new brush, um, this is one of the reasons why I love to use the, the Wacom tablet. Because you can, you can create a brush to where it's, you can get like a weighted brush, and they use a lot of the character cleanup uh, to where like if you wanted to go from like thick to thin, like some of the, um, um, I'm trying to think of different shows that do it. Like the show that I'm working on right now, there's lots of thick and thin. So it's not just one solid, consistent line. It's got a lot of thick and thin line weight to it. You can create a brush to where the Wacom tablet is pressure sensitive, so the harder you push, the thicker that line is going to be. The lighter you push, the thinner the line is going to be. Um, um, so, I want to say I want to create a new weighted brush. You can go over to um, your brush palette. Over here, there's this little, like, Thing it looks like a piece of paper with lines on it or whatever. You can click on that. You can just click new brush. Hit new calligraphic brush. This menu will pop up. Um, don't worry about this, the angle and the roundness, but which, with the diameter, I would go down and I would change this to be like a 2 two points and then you'd see these three things that say fixed I would change all three of those to say pressure so now your Wacom ta tablet is going to be pressure sensitive to whatever your pressure is on uh, while you're pushing down the variation I would just keep that two as well and then hit OK so you'll see on your on your brush palette that I've just created this new brush Um, those of you that have Wacom tablets, you'll be able to uh, to do this. But you can go in and see how the harder I push now, I'm pushing softer, harder. We get a nice weighted line. Um, that's what all of these brushes are. These are all so you can get a, a nice crisp weighted line. You guys aren't going to have any of these brushes, but when I get you those files that I want to get you, you'll have them to be able to use them. So these are just some really cool, this is like a charcoal brush, uh, like a chalk kind of feel. These are just some cool like uh, dry brush things, kind of strokes. These are all going to appear as strokes on your tool palette, not fills. Um, these are some, just some different uh, brushes that I use for like ground texture to give it um, uh, just some different texture like pebbles, um, just some distant pebbles or whatever. Click on one of these. Were all of those brushes vector files as well? I created those brushes myself. Yeah. Um, 
I can show you guys how to make your own brush. Okay. Really cool. Um, you guys want to learn that? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's say I have this this brush right here. 